my name is Barbara Gray from Clarity Stamp in the UK and today I would like to show you how to make a reflection of a stamp using the jelly plate. The card that I'd like to make with you today is this one here where I've actually taken our uh, remountable set of trees and their mantles and I've made a reflection in the water. It's really nice, really nice set of stamps and the jelly plate size I'm going to use is the larger one, the 8x10. So we'll keep coming back to the card and we'll check our progress as we go along. So the first thing we've, we want to do is take a piece of low tack masking tape and we're going to run the low tack masking tape along the length of the jelly plate. This will be our guide for the water. And then I'm going to take a brown ink pad, I'm going to use espresso. I need a little bit of copy paper as well because I'm going to want to blot a little bit. This is quite a new ink pad. And then I'm going to take my stamp and ink up like so and then gently kiss the paper so that it's not too wet. And then I'm going to deposit the stamp on the jelly plate like so, give a little wiggle and the base of the tree is always going to be on the masking tape. I like that tree a lot, so I think I'll use it again. One, two, three, and then we'll kiss the paper, and then we'll use this one again, maybe here too, like so. Nice. And then I should take another tree. The set comes with naked trees, four naked trees, and their mantles, which is rather cool. Kiss. And then I think we're going to do a different composition this time. Let's add this tree here, give it a little wiggle, like so. I think I'll leave a gap there. Gaps are good. And then I shall take my poplar tree, which is very nice, and again, blot. And we'll pop that one at the side, like so. There we go. So it's a different composition to what the finished card is here, but that's okay. It will be different. Different is good. So we've got this sorted now, and now I'm going to take some greens. I think I'll use a bit of lettuce and a bit of pesto, a mix. Let's just do this. Um, different colours, and I want to use the mantles now. So this time, let me ink up my mantle. Um, you see, when we're using the jelly plate, the great thing is you don't have to rush because the ink's not going to dry. The ink sits on that jelly plate perfectly. And again, we're going to just kiss so it's not too dark. I've just used lettuce and then we're going, we can see exactly where the mantle goes and then we'll add a bit of green. There we go. And again, ink up like so and blot. And then this is the same tree again. So we'll just add a little bit of green. And even though you think there's nothing happening, you'll be surprised when we pull a print. So now let's take our poplar tree and this time I think I'll use a little bit of green and a little bit of dark green. There we go, lettuce and and I'll blot it again, like so. Oh no, a bit too much of a blot there. Right, that's good. And then I'm just going to add this one in there like that. Always give a bit of a wiggle and have faith, something is happening. Now this time again I'm going to take, this time I'll take the pesto, it's much darker, and we'll blot it. It's a different tree and then we'll just Add the foliage in the shade, in the water if you like. All right, that'll do for now. And what I want to do now is take my A5 card, the other card I'm going to use, it's just a normal top quality card for stamping, and I'm going to halfway down, I'm going to just put my card down on the jelly plate and pull the print. So then we're just going to run through like so. And then we will transfer our print, you see, from the water. So our reflection's perfect. Bingo. And then we'll lift this off here. Just take the masking tape off there. But I'm going to use a fresh piece now. And I want to cover up, let's just cover up the, the water. And let's stamp in the trees above the water. I'm going to use a, a mat now to do this just so I can do that. 
Now let's take our tree and again this time though I don't want to blot too much because obviously this is above the water isn't it. So we're just going to take our tree and we can make sure that the right tree is in the right reflection. There we go this will be good. And then we'll do the next one like so. So we just stamp them into place and then we'll go back through in a moment and we'll add the mantles. So it's very simple but let's get the stamping done first and then we can concentrate on the background. So here's the smaller tree, nice, and then the poplar tree. There we go. So we've got the poplar tree as well, so we'll just add that too. So we've got all four of the trees now. And the next thing I want to do is add the mantles. So I can take, for example, our darker one, our pesto one. Here we are. We'll just, if you want to add a little bit of light, then if you just kiss the side like so, you see, then we can, don't want to make it too dark, but this will look great. And we're just going to add that to the sky area. There we are. And then we'll take our larger tree and it works really well. Let me just do the other three. Okay, so we've got our uh, trees above the water and we've got the trees below the water. And I just want to add a little bit of the um, the foliage along the base here. So I'm going to take my pesto ink pad and I'm just going to just add a bit of pesto like so. And actually I think I might even mix it up with a bit of slate. Let's have a look just to tone it down a bit. Good. And then what we want to do is just turn this over. I've already mounted it on the ruler you see and I don't want to make it too dark, so let's just check. That'll be all right. There we go. And then we're just going to come along here. Let's put a piece in the middle, like so. There we go. Nice. And then we can always add a little bit at, the, at that end. Oh, we need a bit more ink, I suppose. Um, but we're going to cut this bit off anyway. I think we'll cut this off. We'll trim it back. There we go. So we'll just add a bit here and a bit there. Right, then that way it doesn't matter how much we cut off, does it? Okay, so we'll just tone that down a bit. There we are. And then we're ready to make the background. So if we lift this off now, you'll see we've got a really cool reflection. Let's have a look at this for a moment. And let's compare with this one. So it's the background now that needs doing. This is easy. But what I want to do is trim this before we do anything else. Right, now we're rocking. So the next thing I want to do is just sort out, make sure that this is the sky and this is the uh, water. Now let's do this very quickly. Um, First thing I want to do is do the water. So I just want to add this bit here, just a mask, and then we're just going to take a lovely blue and slate colour, and I'm just going to dust in, I'll show you, you just dust in the cloudy blue first, and then we'll follow through with a little bit of um, slate, Adirondack, very nice colour. Okay, so we've got some 
cloudy blue, which is a real cloudy blue and, and very light. It's one of the Adirondack lights, so the clue's in the name. And now I want to deepen it a bit. Let's take a look at the um, card that we're headed for. And you can see now I still need to do some work around the edges. So I'll show you how to get to this. Um, also notice that there are some flecks here. I think when I use the, the low tack masking tape, some of the adhesive seems to cling. But I actually like that because it looks like I did it intentionally in the water. It gives it a bit of a distressed look. Well, that's my argument and that's what I'm sticking with. Now, let's do some around the edge. And this time I'm going to work with slate which is this one, and also another colour called Old Paper. But I just want to put a little bit of uh, depth around the edge first before I do anything else. Right, so I've added a bit of darkness around the edge but I think I'm going to go in a little bit deeper. And the way to do this now is to use a mask, uh, a mat, sorry, and, um, and a blending tool. So I'm just gonna rejig my, my worktop here while I use a mask and a blending tool to do this job. Just bear with me a second. All right, now this time, what we're gonna do is take some old paper. This is a, a distress pad. And we're just going to add a little bit of this around the edge. And the idea is just to take a little bit like that and then just work our way around. So I just want a bit more than that. And then I'll add a bit of slate over the top. And that will give us that beautiful photo finish. It's the combination that does the job. So first we need to add this colour, which gives you that kind of muted old paper look and then when we've gone round with that colour then we add a bit of slate which is a bit darker. So then I'll pick up some of the slate on the blending mat. The clarity blending mat is fantastic for this. Here we go. So then we can come in and start really darkening up the edges. See how I'm coming in now and I'll work my way round and round and round bit of old paper first and then come in with the grey. So you go and put the kettle on and I'll sort this out. Okay, so whew, it's hard work, isn't it? Now let's take a look at where we're headed and where we are now. So the only thing that's missing really is this little burst of colour and a couple of birds. So let's take a look now and we'll add a little bit of yellowness to that area there. This is quite straightforward and all I'm going to use is butterscotch and one of my brushes and this will do the job very, very easily. There we go. So we're just going to load up with a little bit of butterscotch, make sure it's not too heavy, and then we're just going to come from this area all the time. This is where the sun is, is in my head anyway. So we'll just make a little bit in the reflection as well. And you can literally just take the brush and just go like that, do a little swizzle. There we are. Around we go, bit in the water as well, and it's starting to look like a real landscape picture. There we go. Nice. No two are ever the same. So finally, the last thing we want to do is add a couple of birds. Now, the way to get a reflection, again, is to use the jelly plate. So let me show you. If I take the jelly plate and I take the birds, 
and I take my slate ink pad and I just ink up my bird like so. And then I stamp them gently onto my jelly plate like so. So they're there. I trust that they're there. And then I've got to put them in the water because that will dictate to me where they are in the sky. So I'm just going to more or less say that I want them there where my fingers are. And then I'm going to plant my picture like so. And then when I turn it over, there are my birds, you see, in the water. Magic. Then I can turn this around and now I can put my birds in the sky. And I know that they will be exactly in the right place because I can see where I'm putting them. And then I can pop them in the sky and the reflection is perfect. So there we are. This is slightly darker than the other one, but you can see that um, in principle we're in the same ballpark. And if I were to put that now on white and frame it, it would be rather lovely. So I hope you enjoyed that. Thanks very much for joining me and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye now.